and welcome to another episode of the Planetary Persuader. I am Cosmic Kev, your host. This is for the weekend beginning Friday, September 27th, 2019. Now looking at the sky today, we would find the moon in the constellation of Virgo. And the part of Virgo that the moon is in would be the nakshatra known as Uttara Thalguni. Um, you know, earlier today, it might, if you're watching it real early, it might still be in Leo, but, you know, Tara Falguni is one quarter Leo, three quarters Virgo, and then, what happens tomorrow, folks? It's big. It's a new moon. So, we have a new moon in the constellation of Virgo. Now, I know for, this is mostly Western astrology, it's actually in the uh, seasonal sign of Libra, so we call it a Libra new moon, but um, if we're looking with our telescope, for the, you'd look in the constellation of Virgo to find this, and the lunar mansion of this new moon is known as Hasta. Now, Hasta is the hand or the fist. It's ruled by the moon. It's all in Virgo. It's a place where Mercury is exalted, and um, by the way, Mercury is exalted right now because Mercury is in Virgo, and so um, it's in its exaltation sign, but Mercury is getting out of his exaltation tomorrow, and it's going into Libra, but it doesn't do so bad in Libra either. Yeah, Mercury is going to be in Libra, and in Western astrology this week, Mercury is going to move, well, it's going to move into Scorpio by um, Thursday morning in not in the constellation of it, but the seasonal Western astrology. So all of you people, like, like, a, what's your sign? You know, you're talking about sun signs based on seasons, and about 20% of the time, they're, you know, some, something like that. You're, you've got the right sign. And the other 80%, you're wrong, it's one sign back. <laughs> because everything's moved from 250 years ago. And that's an important thing to know about. And that's what separates... The real astrologers from, you know, just the ones playing it. Playing it. And so Hasta is about service, and Hasta is about working, and it's about making things happen. Its ruling deity is Savitar, which is another name for the sun and the savior. And really, you know, without people doing work for us, we're kind of lost, right? And this is, I consider this one of the most Kapha nakshatras, because it's ruled by the moon, and it's all Virgo, which is earth, so there's like this earth-water component, which is very Kapha, and so, um, and there's a, there's a reliability to it, and these people don't want to be leaders, they just want to, but they're really good at enterprise and, and running their own business, so that's part of this moon. And, and to be honest with you, I mean, the real meaning of Libra, you know, as in Western astrology, the sun's in Libra right now is the scales were there not so much for justice but it was like to make a deal let's trade something i'll give you some of this that let's see how this weighs out and so the marketplace is the libra environment and this is you know old original astrology so with that said and no f further ado we're going to go sign by sign starting with aries so whoop -doo. greetings aries welcome to your horoscope and um so what's the story behind Mars? Well, you know, Mars is um, moved into Virgo. You know, it'll still be in the constellation of Virgo where it is now as far as looking at it in the sky. So one of the things I see is that you have this ability to be more athletic right now. It's like getting in shape, cutting wood, you know, getting wood ready for the winter and um, helping others, working on your own health issues, that's important. And eventually, you're going to want to negotiate relationship, you know, because right now, so many things are focused on relationship. When we look at Venus, Mercury, Sun, all in the seventh house. So you're trying to be fair to yourself. You're trying to make a deal. You're trying to, to bust out. And eventually, this stuff is all going to intensify. And it's the most popular way we look at things, you know. That's, so that's why I do this, this kind of system for you. Um, you know, you have good fortune with Jupiter in the ninth house. Um, listen to your teachers. Do the right thing. You're going to make it. 
That's what I'm going to say. You're going to make it. You're going to be all right. Forget about it, as I say back east. Forget about it. Uh, greetings, Taurus. Welcome to your horoscope. So, you know, one of the fun things about Western astrology, especially in the more evolutionary sense, is, you know, we, we have these three other outer planets we discovered over the last few hundred years that we use. Um, one of them is called Uranus. And Saturn's always concerned about the welfare of poor people and people that aren't doing as well. So this is good. You, you like work, but you work in unconventional ways. Um, other people's money, allowing people, you might have to take a loan to make money because of Jupiter being in your eighth house right now. Um, Venus is, you know, tra la la lepping through your sixth house. And like I said last week, it's a good time to get a good outfit, you know. And Uranus is retrograde, so there's like a revolution within you, especially if you're born, you know, between, say, April 20th and May 3rd, you know, like you people are getting more stirred up. Or if you have planets, you know, moon or um, rising sign in the first 10 degrees of Taurus, you know, things are getting a little more shaken up from from the Uranus effect. Um, so, you know, Mars is encouraging you to be more creative and um, I just say, you know, go with that. Um, come from your heart. Keep working on things. And work on your health right now. Because a lot of planets, a lot of grahas, grabbers, are grabbing issues that affect your health. They affect your co-workers. There's some people that are just naturally going to be a-holes to you. And that's okay. So, greetings, Gemini. What's, what's up for you this week? Well, I think things are getting better. There's sort of this relief. Because now the sun is... In the fifth house, and, you know, for Gemini, anybody, when the sun's transiting your fifth house, the sun is working better for you. It helps put you in your heart. It helps you see yourself in, as a leader in a more executive position, as a teacher, as someone who knows somewhat about what they're talking about. And it helps you with your children. It can help you with your love life because you're more in your heart. So that's good. And, you know, most things with Gemini, of course, are, is Mercury. So what's Mercury doing? You know, what's the whole Mercury story? Well, Mercury is running through your fifth house, and it's about to go in the sixth house. So we're going from a place where we're being, we have creative ideas, and we're having a lot of fun, and maybe we're playing with our kids, and and then we're suddenly it's like, okay, I got to do work. I got to manifest some money. I got to take care of health issues and other people's needs. That's part of what's going to happen this week. And that's part of some of the change you're going to see. But overall, like with moon, you know, new moon in Libra, it's in your fifth house. So it's this heart opening, loving, creative thing that you're going to be a part of. And, and the deal with like Western zodiac libra it's like the interior decorator it's like oh well we're gonna put this there and balance this out and make this look nice over here it's got that natural ability to do that type of thing and so let's um bring out some of those natural abilities okay all right and yeah there's some deep you know ego crushing saturn in the eighth house stuff that gemini's have been going through you know, it's like, ah, uh, that's really hard. Oh, I feel that. But, you know, Saturn is, the thing about Saturn is Saturn moves slow, Saturn is patient, and Saturn rewards hard work and consistent effort. You know, this is, this is what I call, Saturn really likes it when you get a wheelbarrow full of, you know, 100-pound bags of cement and you're going uphill with it. That's the kind of stuff that Saturn really likes. <laughs> <laughs> so well that sounds impossible well there where there's a will there's always a way you know you may you just have to you, you might not be able to go uphill as fast and you may have to um make the gradient even lower so that you have to take a long time to get up there yeah yeah that's the way it works well greetings cancer welcome your horoscope so anyhow we've got this north node thing happening and it's been going on for a while so north node's a hungry that has no bottom. It's a North Node or Rahu doesn't really b like boundaries and stuff. Um, and it feels like it's a foreigner. 
So you might have been going through a period in the last year or so where you're just like, oh my gosh, nothing seems to make any sense to me, you know, as far as where I fit in. And relationship-wise, there's been a lot of breakups, you know, things have been difficult. So part of it is I don't want to do this anymore. Things are really changing rapidly, especially among millennials. Oftentimes, even more often than not, the woman will make more money. First world context. We're seeing that. So everything for cancer is like family right now. So you're dealing with family issues. You're dealing with who's your tribe. How do you find happiness? How do you begin to relate to the outer world? And also it's kind of like this feeling of like, I want to be a homebody. I really don't want to go out anywhere. I don't know if the world feels safe right now. I need to work on something. And, and so greetings, Leo. Welcome to your horoscope. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right, so, so we got this new moon. And new moon in Libra. And that is your third house, and that is neighbors, and that is siblings, and cousins, and communication, working with your hands. Um, gleaning information. It has curiosity, it has courage. <clears throat> and the third house is the one house where you can make improvements in your life. It's, one of the, it's a house that allows for improvements. Even though things can be kind of rough and dicey, you make things better. And, you know, I kind of look at every house in the Zodiac as, you know, first house, 0 to 7. Second house, 7 to 14. Third house, 14 to 21. 14 to 21, we're getting into our adult bodies, but we really haven't figured it out yet. And so there's a lot of forgiveness there. There's a lot of give, and there's a lot of curiosity. And a lot of things go down in third house situations. So that's... Largely what's going on is the sun transits your third house, as this moon is transiting your third house this weekend, and so making an impact in your neighborhood. There's also like short trips, you know, trips within a couple hundred miles of where you live, you know, things that you could go to in a day and come back, or just maybe one night or something, that, that kind of thing. Um, that works out pretty well. And, and getting yourself educated, gleaning the right information. I'm working with that. So that's part of it too. And shall we do another sign? Why not? Okay. Greetings, Virgo. Welcome to your horoscope. So, so Virgo, there's this energy. You know, you've had this energy because of Mars. You know, Mars has been in your first house for several weeks now. And so um, you are actually enjoying exerting effort more than usual. You're like, okay. I got this. I'm going to do this. Let's make this happen. And one thing I really like about Virgo is Virgo attempts to do things in sort of a scholarly way. This is the right way to do this. Let's methodically go through everything, get it organized in a way that we know things work. It's really the, the science sign of the zodiac. And it's also the place where Mercury gets exalted. You know, so our thinking process, our consciousness is in a really, really good place in the sign of Virgo. And so Libra is about manifesting family, your voice, you know, how you're, you have to talk to people. And it's also about making money. This is where the money comes. And, and so money is coming into your life, Virgo. You know, Virgo risings, Virgo moons too. There's, you know, they, um, there's more resources. And so you're here, you've got the energy to do the work and also you're being more resourceful. So this is great. This is fantastic. And eventually this is going to, you know, this information is going to leak into the community. And they're going to see, no, I, I get this. This, this worked for me. And then... Even though Saturn, Pluto, South Node's been some hard things, you're in your heart right now. You're in a place of creativity and opening. And so you get rid of what doesn't work and you work on long-term projects that you know are going to be most rewarding. And you're looking for a spiritual relationship. And those are hard to find, you know, because everybody's got their own view. And, you know, I, what, I, what I find is really interesting. It's really easy to kind of 
fall into a kind of like a cult of some religion and go, okay, I'm under the covering of the orthodoxy of what these people believe, whether they're evangelical Christians or Muslims or Herbodnik Jews or whatever one it is, you know, you can pick one, Jehovah Witness, Mormons, I mean, they all got their own take, and then you're under this covering of their trip. And I mean, I, you know, I could say there's some something to that even in, you know, astrology, certainly Vedic or astrology Jyotish. One thing I would say about them, though, is that they've been at it for thousands of years. And um, all the other spiritual teachers, they knew about this stuff, too. Yeah. And the new spiritual teachers that say they're following those spiritual teachers will say, oh, no, they, no, they didn't. That stuff's all of the devil. I'm like, holy crap, man. Get real. Get real. Now, you know, they're going to feed you nursery school religion, and that's okay. You know, I, I have respect. Your faith is good. Don't worry. That's universal. You know, God, goddess, see all. So that part doesn't matter. Hey, hi, Libra. Welcome your horoscope. How you doing today? Hopefully good, because this is your time of year. I mean, suns in Libra. We've got um, Venus in Libra, um, you know, in the seasonal context. Uh, Mercury um, in Libra, in the seasonal context. So, you know, and, and the thing about Mercury and um, Venus is that they're Raja planets, you know, they're regesic, which means that they're passionate. And so you've got a lot more passion driving you. It's moving you forward. Now, Mars is in the 12th house, and it's a very tricky place for it to be, because that can be secret enemies. And it can also be kind of this restless sleep and restless subconscious. So dealing with that, you know, um, violent thoughts. You know, we, we, we live in a society that's controlled by violence. Um, we have police they carry guns and billy clubs, and they use violence to manipulate society to do what rich people want them to do. That is basically true. And then they, they, they soften that by saying, oh, we're here to protect you. We're here to bring order in society. You know, and there, there is some truth to that. But they also are run by international bankers, and the big thing is money. So, you know, if you get more money by stopping somebody from robbing a bank than you do from molesting somebody, guess where they're going to go? Where there's a molesting, where that might be cause great harm, we think, oh, they should go after that. No, they're going to go after the bank robber because there's money. And, the, and so, Libra, you being so kind of justice and fairness oriented to some, way, some extent, you understand these things. And... Um, you know, you got to watch your back from these th these clowns um, because they've got only one thing on their mind. It's, um, you know, it, it is take and conquer. And there has not been a single real war about religion, folks. I mean, they're all about taking other people's stuff, every single one. And then the religion's a sideline. It's a distraction, you know, and that's how most traumatic events are politically. It's like, look over there, and we're going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that. All right. Greetings, Scorpio. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, I mean, you know, Libra time is not like, oh, wow, it's just all um, bread and roses. I mean, it's, uh, you're kind of in the minefield, and you're harvesting all the deeds you've done in the last year. Now, the good thing about 12th house and Scorpio is that, you know, you vibe with that kind of Piscean energy of it. And um, you're sort of a protector uh, of Libra to some extent, too, with your Mars influence. And you have this intuitive quality that, that goes good, too. Um, you know, Mars is in your 11th house. you got friends that have your back. That's good. You know, it's going to go in the... Tw it's about to go in the 12th house. And then there's these other people that don't have your back. And so you have to watch out for them because they just want to complicate things. Because they're, they're part of the dark force, which is fear and creating confusion and burdens for other people. You know, there's a karma to that, though. And um, they're not completely protected. They will suffer from that, too, eventually. So what you got to do is just stay in the prayer mode. You know, stay in the meditation mode. Stay in the imagination. This is a good time to journal. Write down what you want to do, because your solar year is coming up in just a few weeks. You know what I mean? Your solar season, your solar month. You know, on October 23rd on, it's like, boom, everything is Scorpio. And it's going to rock. But right now, just pay your bills, take care of the karma, 
and pay attention to your dreams. Keep a little dream journal. And um, yeah, Venus moving in your first house and Mercury too. Passion's about to boil. And you might even in even in this kind of, you know, more tre treacherous time become the flavor of the month. So watch out for that. Okay. Greeting Sagittarius and welcome to your horoscope. Now what I'm thinking about is, um, you know, Libra is like social life. So this is like a very social season for you between the 23rd of September to the 22nd of October. It's like, okay, you know, parties, uh, meeting people, um, being rewarded for good karma. You know, maybe there's a little, there, there might be some big gains. You might actually make some money in it. And I mean, here with Jupiter in the first house, that certainly isn't going to hurt, you know. So there are some... There's a very positive um, planetary alignment for Sagittarius in, in a lot of respects right now. Um, even the Mars in the Midheaven is really cool, too, in the 10th house. It helps you with career. And um, then there's the North Node in the 8th house. So it's like you want to be right about all these mystery things. And, um, you know, and, and so having a spiritual attitude towards money, giving it away to help others will probably grease the wheel for more reward in your life. Um, I mean, things have been maybe a little bit tough and tight economically, but they're about to get better. And, um, you know, what I'd say is just like when you're in the workplace, be careful not to hurt yourself. Um, just, you know, there's surprises happen all the time and just watch out for those things. Keep your house nice and safe too, all that good stuff. And, We'll get together again next week and we'll talk again, right? All right. Well, hello, my friend Capricorn. How's it going? Well, I mean, there's a lot of serious stuff you've had to deal with. And there, there's no, you know, Saturn is serious. Capricorn's a serious sign. You know, Saturn and Capricorn is a um, powerful place for Saturn, they'd say. And then there's Jupiter in the 12th house. So Jupiter is, you know, enhancing dreams is bringing out some of your good karma. So even though you might feel lost in the 12th house, spaced out, at worst, drinking too much, partying too much, um, somebody's like a designated driver and has your back. You know, it's like, oh no, I want, I want to take care of it. It's kind of like how cops were in the good old days, you know, like the 50s and 60s. It's like, oh, so you've had a little bit too much to drink, Mr. Durkin. I will take you home. Right now, we can just park the car here and leave it. It wasn't like, oh, we're going to get you in trouble, da, da, da. It's like, no, let's just get you off the road and get you home because I'm here to protect you. It was like, now it's like, hmm, this looks like several thousand dollars or more of revenue for my group for you doing a really dangerous, stupid thing. And so, you know, and some people are like, well, you should be punishment because, yeah, it is. It's dumb. It's, you know, it's, it's heavy equipment. You can kill somebody. So don't do that. Um, be real with yourself. Um... You're getting a lot of creative uh, stimulation career-wise. Your house is packed, okay? So you're really trying your best to do your best job and show that you are capable of doing good work. There's nothing wrong with that. And I think you've got a lot of insights, too, because of Pluto. So you're going to be succeeding. I see Capricorn as a success in spite of obstacles. But you've got karma to deal with, so just be grateful and move forward. Well, 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 if it isn't my old friend Aquarius. Greetings, Aquarius. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, sun and Libra is wonderful for you. I mean, it's another air sign. You're an air sign. Libra's an air sign in the seasonal contextual thing. And um, so this new moon is about travel. It's about spiritual wisdom. It's about foreign languages. It's about taking risk and being rewarded and higher education, getting to know the deep stuff, the bigger stuff, the bigger picture. Now, you know, Saturn's in your 12th house. And then we've got Neptune in your second house. And, Plu you know, and then we've got Pluto and South Node in the 12th house too. But you're kind of like hemmed in by this energy of uncertainty of Neptune and this certain restriction of Saturn. You know, we'll just talk about those two first. And then also, this kind of past life karmic debt that is heavy. And so how do you do it? How do you deal with it? Do the right thing. Have charity towards those who are handicapped, 
um, in prison, incarcerated, um, people who are really suffering, help those people, regardless of race, creed, or, you know, gender, um, help those people that are suffering. And, and that will alleviate, you know, even having a talisman or something that reminds you of good spiritual truth could be very helpful at this time. And, you know, you got good fortune. Good things are going to happen to you. So, no worries here. All right. Well, greetings, Pisces. You know, welcome to your horoscope. You know, so, there's Neptune in the first house. Um, softening. Having faith. Realizing that we can only see just a fragment of what's out there. I mean, we only use a certain percentage of our brains. You know, so, so that right there tells you something. What is Libra? Well, Libra is the eighth house, you know, for Pisces. So that's um, other people's property. It's occult studies, learning about mysteries, like through astrology, things like this. And, and so there's a lot of information. It's also your intuition's heightened. And there's a lot of death and rebirth. And I mean, my goodness gracious, you know, we've got, you know, Capricorn planets in your 11th house. So you and your social circle have seen a lot of death. You've seen a lot of suffering. You've seen a lot of people just kind of leave the planet all of a sudden. I mean, you know, and not just the famous ones, you know, I, I'm sure in your own inner circle. So this is big stuff. So compassion, compassion going out to you. And um, Jupiter is helping you with your work, with your talents and skills, allowing you to be seen, allowing you to show your best work, and, um, and giving you a chance to help others. And, and so, um, one of the things when you have a big eighth house transit, I say ask other people for help. You know, because when you ask others for help, you tend to get it when you have an eighth house transit. Otherwise, if you're trying to control things, no, that's my money, don't, no, you know, and just be real. Pay off your debt, just like a sort of square deal, you know, just be good with that, and, you know, you're going to come on top of your game, because as these planets move into your ninth house, like Venus and Mercury, things are about to get more exciting and more exciting. And I love it when you um, ring the bell, when you share this video, when you subscribe to the Planetary Persuader, and... And when you make comments, because you are important to me, you're the reason why I get up in the morning and do this. And I love you, and we'll do it again. And Marn, too. And we give love to Marn, the producer, the cameraman, the executive of uh, Citizen Television. All right, see you next week.